My name is Raphael, Dr. Raphael James. I work with the CRIM, Center for Research, Information Management, and Media Development in Lagos. CRIM are the owners of the CRIM Free Public Library, the CRIM Museum of Nigerian History, the CRIM Skill Acquisition Center for Women. They are also the publishers of the Nigerian, uh, the National Biographer Magazine, and the African Dem Magazine. Then we also have the Cream Stores, which promotes domestic tourism in Nigeria. I am an author. I've written 56 manuscripts and I've published 24 books. I, like I said, I published two different magazines. Uh, I think that's the most I can remember about myself. Yeah, the library, uh, the museum, uh, 138 Ejibo Idimu Road in um, Idimu, under the Alimocho local government area. The library started in 19, um, 2004. The library started in 2004. The museum started in 2010. And the library has been running from 2004 to date three. The whole concept was to see how we can help the younger generations to go back into the habit of reading. And we felt that considering the fact that prices of books are expensive in the market, and most parents might not be able to afford to buy books. We decided to set the library open and make it free so that for those who can afford to buy, even those who can afford to buy can actually have somewhere conducive enough for them to come and sit down and read. So the library 2004, the museum 2010, we started the museum when we felt that um, the fact that history was uh, taken off of um, our school curriculum wasn't good enough and a lot of Nigerian history was dying down. And we wanted something that was a little bit unique. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I'm into tourism, and because of that, through tourism, I visited 17 of the national museums that are spread across the country. And I noticed that what most of the national museums are storing uh, as part of our history are mostly artworks. So I wanted something that is a little bit different. So it started as a photo museum, and presently we have over 45,000 photographs telling Nigerian story. Then we now move into artifacts. Now, the artifacts I'm talking of here now is not just at but we are, we are trying to document things that have been used over the years. They can actually tell our story in a different form. Uh, for example, we have a section that has to do with Nigerian currency. And uh, one of the oldest coins we have in the museum is a 1910 Nigerian British West African coin. Um, in all, we have um, 52 different coins that Nigeria have used from 1910 to now. We have all the paper money, the paper notes that Nigeria have used from 1950 to date. Uh, we have other, other items that were used as money, like the tobacco money, the iron money, the copper money, feathers, beads, you know, all those things. And the whole thing we're trying to do is use them to teach um, little children as they visit us and even adults too. Also in the museum, we have um, Nigerian stamps. Stamps as old as 1900 uh, in our museum, which we also used to tell people our story, where we've been coming from, where we are, and probably that will guide us to where we'll be going in the future. It might also interest you that we have things like recharge cards that have been used. You know, presently, now if you want to load your phone, you load online, you know, and you can transfer from your bank account. But there was a time we used to have cards. You have to scratch a card. And some of us, if I the younger ones who are growing up, they will not even know what a scratch card was. So we have samples of those cards. We have samples of cocks of drinks that uh, have been taken in Nigeria over the years. We have a section that has to do with telecommunication, like the cards falls into telecommunication. We have different sizes and shapes of telephones that have been used in Nigeria, uh, dating back to the 50s and 60s in, in, in our custody. We have different brands of bottles, of drinks, like um, Candy Gorana, Africola, you know, all those old drinks of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Now, this, like I said, is the uniqueness of the museum we're doing. We have the book section also, which is not the library now, the book section for the museum, which hosts only archival and reference material. So we have newspapers of 1920s, we have 30s, 40s, we have books on Nigerian history. Books, we have a, a section that deals with biographies of Nigerians. We have over 300 different biographies of prominent Nigerians all in the museum. And so many other things that I might not be able to mention as we talk. But the, 
the, the, the main point here is that anything that can take us, take our memory back to what Nigeria used to be, probably when some of us were kids, or even when our own parents were kids, are the kinds of things that uh, we are documenting. Well, interestingly, I would say none. In fact, recently I had to beg uh, a very senior officer in one of the parastatals that have to do with the things I'm doing in government um, to visit us. And, and my appeal was just come and see what, I'm not asking you to give me anything, just visit us and see what we're doing. For example, besides running the library, which I talked about, I've donated over 56,000 books across the country. And these books, I am buying them, I buy books. The, the idea is that I had wanted to set up 774 libraries across the country that each local government would get a library for me. But I don't have the financial capacity to do that. And because I don't have that, what I now do is the little money I have, I buy books and I donate to other individuals or organizations who have interest in setting up libraries. So I kind of encourage them to also set up libraries. So far, no government, no government. There are individuals, one or two of my friends, probably just this, for, for example, today we had a book reading. After the book reading, the author just gave us five copies of her book. So, and uh, besides that, I'm also the patron of Association of Nigerian Authors in Lagos. There was a time I hosted the authors, and almost all the authors that came, some gave us a copy, two copies, some gave three copies, like that. I have friends who, when they write their books, they'll be like, oh, Dr. James, let us donate to your library. Some, some will give us 10 copies, some will give 20 copies. But besides that, none, no financial donation, not from any organization, not from any government. But from individual, like I said, of course, I have friends who believe in what I do. Uh, for example, yesterday, somebody paid 10,000 Naira into our account. In fact, not just somebody paid. The, um, the world rapper man, Ambassador David Obaro, paid 10,000 Naira into our account. And he said, this is his support towards our bid of the bike that Mr. Kunla Denyoju rode from London to Lagos. Because we are trying to, we're making efforts to see if we can actually get that bike and put that bike in our museum. And the bid starts at 10 million. So... I'm trying to put all kind of funds we can together to make sure that the bike stays. That bike, let me mention this. We are living in a society where we don't appreciate creativity. And that is part of the thing that is killing us. And that is why every day you see Nigerians who are doing good would leave the shores of Nigeria and travel abroad, United States, UK. And when they get there, they do well. All we just need to do with this people is let us support them. Let us encourage them. Somebody took a risk of staying on the road for 40 days and probably 40 nights. Riding a bike from London to Nigeria, it goes beyond telling him congratulations. Let us keep that bike in a place where we can remember it in the next 50, 100 years. And I know the best place to keep it will be in a museum, not in an individual's house. If an individual buys it, maybe the person will ride it for a couple of days, it will run out and you throw it away. But that is one thing we should actually try to prevent. Yeah, I am actually also one person who don't believe that the youth are leaders of tomorrow. In fact, each time I talk to young people, I always tell them, I always give them a practical example. If you're in a class or a hall where there are 50 people, 50 youths, and you tell them you are the leaders of tomorrow, you're telling them a big lie. There's no way the 50 of them can be leaders. Out of that 50, if that 50 should form a country, for example, one out of the 50 will become a president. One will become a vice president. The president must have a driver. It will be from that 50. The president will have a gate man. It will be from that 50. So all of us can be leaders of tomorrow. So what it means in NS is that out of that 50 in the hall, who is planning to be leaders of tomorrow? Those who read are the ones that will lead. Readers are leaders. So the only thing I have for the youth is read. The white man have told us repeatedly that the only way to hide things from the black man is to put it inside the pages of books because he knows the black man is not going to open the pages of books. And it is what is happening every day. It is what is killing us. We are living in a, a, a nation I'll give you an example. History have it that on January 8, 1897, Flora Shaw published a story in Time of London where she suggested the name Nigeria for us. And this is what we have lived all, the, all our life with, believing that is part of the history. But recently, I discovered that before Flora Shaw even came up with the name, the name Nigeria had been existing 34 years before then because I saw it in another book that had been written. So if the name was existing 34 years before Flora Shaw talked about it, where did we get the name from? I was telling somebody recently, archaeological reports have it that the people of Unri, Unri is presently in the present-day Anambra state. The people of Unri existed 200 years before Jesus Christ was born. And Unri is still part of what is Nigeria. So we have come a long way as a people. But because we are not documenting our history, we are not reading books, we don't know who we are, 
and we might never know where we are going to. So it is high time for the Nigerian youth. Let us, election is coming. Let us look for that one person who can make things to turn around. Somebody who understands, somebody who is, in fact, let me put it this way. Let us get a reader to be our leader. The cream and uh, the bodies of cream, we have been very busy. We run program every day. We run program every day. So the idea is that we keep coming up with new concepts. Like now we do the book. Our book reading is every Monday. Today we have 22nd book reading of the year. Uh, last two years we did book slam. Book slam was unique because we're the first in Africa running a book slam. The book slam was that we have people dancing and reading. You know, you, they, they'll call you out your, while you're dancing, you're reading. And if you make a mistake or you stammer, you're out of the game. Another person goes in. So we're trying to bring the book slam, uh, book slam back into function. Uh, the major project we are working on now is Kunle Adeoju's bike, London to Lagos. We are doing all we can to bring it down to the Korean Museum to keep. Not because we have the money, but because we believe in the posterity that is behind us keeping the bike for future generations.